855 Eastern Time and Columbia and its affiliated stations bring you Elmer Davis and the news. France and England are about to start a diplomatic drive to try to line up the Scandinavian and the Balkan nations to resist further aggression by Germany and Russia, according to Belief in Paris, reported by our correspondent Mr. Severide earlier this evening. It is felt, he said, that the time is ripe because of recent German setbacks at sea and because the Finns' success in stopping so far the Russian army has been a serious blow to the prestige of the Stalin government. The Germans have apparently heard the same story, for their radio tonight denounces what it calls the English attempt to use the Russo-Finnish conflict to get all of Europe embroiled in the war. This is represented in Paris as a purely diplomatic offensive, but of course it wouldn't get far unless the small nations were prepared to fight if they had to. The success of such a move in the Balkan countries might depend on the attitude of Italy, for England and France couldn't give much help to any Balkan state unless Italy's neutrality were considerably more benevolent to the Allies than it shows any promise of becoming. As for Scandinavia, the critical point appears to be the attitude of Sweden. The Swedish Committee for Finnish Aid announced tonight that several corps of Swedish volunteers will be ready within a few days to join the Finnish forces under the command of General Linder, formerly of the Swedish Army. Their number is estimated at from five to 10,000. An Amsterdam dispatch, quoting diplomatic reports whose nationality is not mentioned, says that 5,000 Swedes are in Finland already and that 10,000 more former Swedish regulars have been assigned to go to Finland as so-called volunteers, like the volunteers that Italy sent to fight in the Spanish Civil War. Till we know whose diplomatic reports these were and what is their possible motive, this story must be received with reserve. Yet the fact that volunteer units are allowed to be formed on Swedish soil certainly makes it difficult to regard Sweden as very neutral. Russia would find in this action sufficient excuse for moving against Sweden as soon as the Finnish war is over. And the Swedish government may presently decide that it might as well be in the war all the way now as to wait its turn. Especially if, as is suggested by our report from Paris, it can count on really effective help from France and England. But the Finnish war is far from over. As it ends its third week tonight, the Russians are still vainly hammering at the lines on the Karelian Isthmus, where they are beaten back every day and still attack again with stolid courage the next day. Today, more than 200 bombing planes aided the attack, but still it got nowhere. There was fighting in north-central Finland, from which we have no news yet. On the Arctic front, the Russian mechanized column, which had driven down from Petsamo, was held up by a blinding blizzard whose immense snowdrifts immobilized the Russian tanks. 577 survivors of the German liner Columbus, scuttled by its crew 400 miles off the coast yesterday to escape capture by a British destroyer, were landed in New York this evening by the American troop cruiser Tuscaloosa, which was at hand when the Columbus was abandoned. Two men were missing. Though this was far inside the safety zone proclaimed by the Panama Conference, a zone which at this point runs more than 600 miles out to sea, the British warship apparently assumed that it had the right to act on the high seas even in the presence of an American cruiser, and the Columbus was accordingly scuttled and burned by its own crew. Several Latin American states, notably Argentina, are working on a plan to put teeth into the safety zone rule, perhaps by declaring that no belligerent warship injured in fighting inside the zone may make any repairs at all in an American port. Secretary of State Hull said this afternoon that he had no news of such a move, but predicted that the situation created by the disregard of the safety zone by both sides in the war would soon be brought to a head. The German freighter Arauca, which put into Port Everglades, Florida yesterday to escape capture by the British cruiser Orion, is still there and likely to stay there for quite a while. It was attached today in a suit brought by a Texas sugar company against its owners for failure to deliver goods ordered. The Orion is still there, too, eight or ten miles offshore, with American warships at hand to see that neutrality is preserved. And the Fort Lauderdale Rotary Club sent a Christmas present of magazines, cigars, and cigarettes to both the British and the German crews. In Japan today, an astonishing protest against recent Japanese recent tendencies of Japanese foreign policy was made by a meeting of nearly 600 prominent men, including former Foreign Minister Arita and General Mazaki, once one of the most powerful men in the Russian or in the Japanese army. Their resolutions denounced any cooperation with Russia and urged the government, although in rather veiled language, to achieve an early ending of the Chinese war. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.